Chris, let's start with you. I got to give you a shout out here. Saturday night, you told me and our audience to look out for Isaiah Hodgins. How does it feel to be right? Well, blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then, right? Now, listen, we knew that if the Giants were going to play well and win the game, Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley were going to have to be a part of what they did offensively. So who is that third piece that was going to step up? And this is a guy that since he's come aboard has been rock solid, right? And he's turned into a real dependable target for Daniel Jones, especially in the red zone, which we talked about last night, comes up big again, catching the touchdown in the red zone. But beyond that, some of the the other grabs, the one along the sideline, great catch where he gets nailed, he gets two feet in, uh, running crisp routes, you know, catching the ball, reliable, no drops. I think it was eight catches on nine targets. So pretty much everything he's done since he's come aboard has been outstanding. So credit to him. Also credit to the Giants front office and Brian Dable and Joe Shane, who obviously familiar with him from the Bills practice squad. And uh, it's the right guy at the right time. You know, they've had injuries. We know at the wide receiver position, someone has to step up in a playoff game and make big plays, and he did that. Yeah, credit to him and also credit to Daniel Jones and he made this offense look close to flawless. Should we not be surprised by Daniel Jones play right now? Not in the least Chelsea. He has been balling out all year and let's be real. This was his most complete and his best game as an NFL starting quarterback and Daniel Jones is just enhancing that contract that he's going to get from the New York Giants at the end of this season. This is a guy threw for over 300 yards. He has the two touchdowns. The way he's making plays with his legs 78 rushing yards and it felt like Jones and the offense had an answer for every third down. You talk about the third downs and you talk about the turnovers. That was the difference in the last game against Minnesota on Christmas Eve. Well, they were much better on third down. They didn't turn the football over and Daniel Jones was flawless across the board. So the Giants have a coach. The Giants have a quarterback. That's clear. Yeah, and he did that all in his playoff debut, which is pretty incredible. Okay, guys, time to talk defense. How much credit does Wink Martindale deserve, especially for holding Justin Jefferson in check on Sunday? Yeah, a lot of credit. You know, we again talked about that last night, feeling like we knew they were going to put some extra focus on Jefferson after the game he had first time around. But for them to hold him to the low numbers that it ended up being, and as Connor pointed out in the last segment, a lot of that 47 yards came on that opening possession where the Vikings went down the field and scored. So after that, Adoree Jackson being back was huge. But if you saw a lot of the ISO replays on Jefferson running his routes, they had bracket coverage on him throughout the course of the ball game at many times. There were two guys in the picture pretty much at all times. So, yeah, Hawkinson ended up with some big numbers again. But you got to turn somebody loose when you're bracketing the number one players. I think they did a tremendous job of taking the Vikings and Justin Jefferson out of what they've become comfortable with and what they relied on so much throughout the course of this uh, season where they were ultra productive and he had an all-time season for a wideout. Under 50. <laughs> 50 yards for one of the best receivers yeah. in the NFL. This guy's been torching everybody. The game plan on Jefferson was fantastic. Dalvin Cook, another guy that you thought was going to be big trouble in this game. The Giants kept him in check, and to me, coaching ended up being the difference in this game. Not just from what Wink Martindale was able to draw up, but you think about some of the self-inflicted wounds and some of the bad calls by the Minnesota Vikings. You didn't get that from Dable. You didn't get it from Wink's defense. And coaching, one of the main reasons why, Chelsea, we're talking about the Giants playing next week in the divisional round.